This brings us to a useful application of alpha halogenation. You see, there may be some circumstances in which you actually want to replace all of the alpha hydrogens with halogen atoms. And one of those circumstances is this. It's called the haliform reaction. It can be summarized in this cool animation that I've assembled for you here. I have to begin with a methyl ketone starting material, and I treat it with hydroxide and excess halogen. This could be chlorine, bromine, or iodine and then I follow it with acid quench. What this does is it effectively converts that methyl ketone into a carboxylic acid. I have to point out one thing, however. This has to be a CH3. This reaction does not work if it's a CH2 or a CH. You might be inclined to think, why can't a methyl ketone be converted into a carboxylic acid directly? In other words, if I had a methyl ketone and I treated it with lots of hydroxide and heat, the hydroxide, we would assume, would come into the carbonyl, could thrust those electrons up there to give me a tetrahedral intermediate like we've seen so many times. And couldn't that negative charge on the oxygen come down and kick off my CH3 to give me this? Couldn't I run this reaction? I hope you guys are noticing some problems with this. This reaction absolutely would not work, and the reason is because of this stage right here. This minus charge comes down, it is not going to kick off a CH3 minus. It's going to kick off an OH minus. Why? Because OH minus is a much better leaving group than a CH3 minus. Thus, I've written that this step is total crap. So you cannot just take a methyl ketone and stir it with hydroxide and eventually convert it over to a carboxylic acid. That will not happen. And yet somehow the haliform reaction does successfully convert a methyl ketone into a carboxylic acid. How in the world does that happen? To answer this question, we have to look at the mechanism. I have a methyl ketone, and I've drawn out all three of our hydrogens here. I treat it with base, and instead of going into the carbonyl carbon, this base is going to strip one of the alpha hydrogens, plunge those negative or, or those electrons into the carbon to give me a negative charge here at the alpha carbon. At this stage, this enolate will search out our halogen. I've shown chlorine here, but this could also be bromine or iodine. It reaches out, grabs one of those halogen atoms, and kicks off the others a leaving group to give me a single monochlorinated product here. Well, the reaction does not stop here. The hydroxide then strips off a second alpha hydrogen to give me this intermediate. This intermediate then looks at our excess halogen, attacks one of those, kicks off the other, and gives me now a dichlorinated species. What do you think is going to occur here? Well, of course, the hydroxide is going to strip off that third hydrogen, dump the electrons down there, and give me this carbanion intermediate. This carbanion is naturally going to seek out more halogen, and you have to run this with excess halogen, and become now trichlorinated. At this stage, now a hydroxide will come into that carbonyl, pushing the electrons up onto that oxygen, to give me this tetrahedral intermediate shown here. Now, this is a huge difference between having a CH3 here. It's got a carbon with three chlorines. What does that do to this carbon? Well, it makes it so that it's a good leaving group. So when the negative charge on this oxygen co collapses back down to reform the double bond, it actually can kick off a carbon instead of kicking off the OH. This gives us this product and this negatively charged carbon. Negatively charged carbon, as I've spoken in the past, is typically uh, not a stable leaving group. But here it is. Why do you think that is? Well, it's stuck to three intensely electronegative and withdrawing chlorine atoms. Those chlorine atoms are sucking away and helping stabilize this negative charge by induction. 
And as you might have guessed, this negative charge is going to look over and see this newly formed carboxylic acid and deprotonate it. That forms this carboxylate and this product. This product right here is called chloroform. It is a product that you often will see on TV where people try and hold a rag over a victim's face and make them go unconscious. Chloroform actually does work to do that. And I actually saw it on Peter Jackson's rendition of the, uh, the new King Kong movie where um, Jack Black knocked King Kong unconscious by throwing several bottles of chloroform at his face. I have no idea if that would work with a 100-foot tall ape. But it's nevertheless a compound that you have probably seen on TV. The reason that we have to quench this reaction ultimately with acid is to protonate this carboxylate and get out our carboxylic acid product. Once again, as I've pointed out, this reaction only works if there's a CH3 at the beginning. It does not work if there's just a CH2 or a CH. Why? Because you have to have three chlorines on this alpha carbon in order to make it a good enough leaving group to get kicked off in this step. If I start with a CH2, then I can only get two chlorines on here, which is not enough electronegative suction to make this carbon a good leaving group. And if I only have a CH, then I can only put one chlorine on it. Thus, the haloform reaction only works if you're starting with a CH3, that is, a methyl ketone. This, I think, is a great place for us to stop. So I will conclude our video presentation here, let you guys take a break, and then encourage you to come back, if you haven't fallen asleep, for our next segment from Chapter 19.